Once a quiet fishing nation, Norway is now sitting on a gold mine. With Europe's eyes turned to them for oil and gas, they've suddenly become the continent's energy kingpin. But the real shocker? They've found a treasure trove of phosphate rock, a mineral critical for everything from farms to futuristic tech, possibly unlocking trillions in wealth. Could this change their economic position? How will this affect the country? Join us as we delve into the amazing story of how this icy land turned into a global powerhouse overnight. Norway's enormous treasure, below ice. In the top half of our planet, there's a land called Norway that is on the path to becoming incredibly wealthy, much more than what many of us could even imagine. But how did this all come about? Our tale begins when a large conflict erupted. Russia launched an attack on Ukraine. This event led to a big problem for several European nations. These nations relied on oil and gas to power their vehicles, heat their homes, and operate their industries. With their regular supply lines in chaos, they were in urgent need of a new source for these essential resources. Enter Norway, a country known for its chilly, deep ocean waters. However, what many don't realize is that beneath these icy waters lie hidden riches, enormous reserves of oil and gas. Virtually overnight, as a direct result of the troubles stemming from the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, European countries turned to Norway for their oil and gas needs. Before long, Norway's oil and gas exports had increased fivefold. This shift catapulted Norway to the forefront as the leading supplier of oil and gas throughout Europe. Picture this, one moment, you're living a normal life, and the next, you're the most sought-after store in the entire neighborhood. That's the dramatic change Norway experienced. This sudden spike in demand and sales propelled Norway's economy to new heights, bringing unprecedented prosperity to the country. Norway has a smart way of handling the money it gets from selling oil and gas. Instead of spending all of it, they save a big part of it in a special savings account known as the Government Pension Fund. This isn't just any savings account. It's filled with around $1.5 trillion. If you break down this huge number, it means if Norway wanted to, it could give $270,000 to every single person living there. Imagine waking up one day to find out you have $270,000. That's the kind of money we're talking about. But the story doesn't end here. There's another twist. A little bit away from Stavanger, a cozy town in the southern parts of Norway, a huge discovery shook everyone. They found a massive amount of a very special rock called phosphate rock. You might wonder, what's so special about a rock? Well, this isn't just any rock. Phosphate is super important because it helps make fertilizers for farms to grow food, batteries to keep energy stored, and parts for solar panels and electric cars. These are things we need for modern life, to eat, to use clean energy, and to drive without polluting the air. Finding phosphate rock is a rare event. Most of the world's phosphate comes from a few places like Morocco, China, Egypt, and Algeria. But there's a catch. Dealing with these countries can be tricky for Western countries because of political tensions and cultural differences. So finding a huge deposit of phosphate in Norway that's like finding a treasure chest in your own backyard. It means a lot not just for Norway, but for other countries too, especially those in the West looking for reliable sources of this critical mineral. Norway, known for its stunning fjords and northern lights, is on the brink of an economic boom, thanks to its natural resources and a bit of luck. From being a quiet supplier of oil and gas to becoming the center of Europe's energy needs, and now finding a rare and essential mineral, Norway's future is shining bright. But with great wealth and resources comes great responsibility. How will Norway handle this newfound wealth? And what does this mean for the rest of the world? Recently, Norway made an exciting announcement that could really change things. They found an enormous amount of a special rock called phosphate rock, 70 billion tons to be exact. This is an incredibly huge amount, so big that it could put Norway at the top of the list of countries when we talk about this special rock. 
Now let's try to understand how much this phosphate rock could be worth. Imagine a number so big, it's hard to picture, $24 trillion. This amount is almost the same as the total value of all the oil left in a country like Saudi Arabia. But finding this phosphate and turning it into money isn't going to be easy. There are big challenges ahead, like following strict rules set by groups like the European Union, figuring out how to get the phosphate out of the ground and clean it up properly, and making sure that taking this mineral out doesn't hurt our environment. These steps are important, but could slow things down. However, even with these hurdles, there's a real possibility that Norway could end up being the richest country in the world because of this huge find. But before we dive deeper into this new chapter, let's take a step back and look at Norway's past. Around the 1950s, Norway was a much quieter, smaller place with about three and a half million people. Back then, Norway's economy wasn't about big, flashy industries. It was about simple things like fishing, cutting wood, and selling these natural goods. But then, something big changed. In the early 1900s, the people of Norway found out they could harness the power of their rushing waterfalls and rivers. They could turn this natural power into electricity. This discovery was a game changer. It meant that big factories could set up in Norway, using this clean electricity to run their machines. This was the start of something big for Norway, a time of growth and building, setting the stage for the country even before they found oil under their seas. Now we look back at how a calm land surprised everyone, turning doubts into a booming energy business. The quiet life before seas of Norwegian gold. There's a common story that goes around saying Norway was once a very poor country until they found oil. But that's not quite right. Back in the 1950s, before anyone even thought about oil, Norway was doing pretty well for itself. It was richer than a lot of places in Europe, had lots of people going to school and getting good educations, and was a place where most people had similar amounts of money and opportunities. Norwegians were proud of their culture and had a government where everyone had a say, a democracy. But then there was this whole thing about oil. Initially, people didn't believe there was any oil in Norwegian waters. They had a look around, didn't see anything that caught their eye, and pretty much everyone started to lose interest. But then something big happened. Over in the Netherlands, they found these massive gas fields. And we're not talking about just any gas fields. We're talking about the largest ones anyone had seen at that point. This was a game changer. This discovery got everyone excited and thinking differently. Countries and big companies started to wonder if there might be hidden treasures of oil and gas waiting to be found in the North Sea not too far from where Norway sits. So in no time, all these giant oil companies began their search in the North Sea waters, hoping to strike it rich. Now the government in Norway was watching all this very closely. They were a bit worried. You see, they thought if these big foreign companies came in and found oil or gas, they might just take all the wealth and leave Norway out in the cold. And then there was this huge question mark over who actually owned the sea. If someone did find oil or gas, Whose would it be? What if a different country decided it was theirs? It was all very confusing and a bit worrying. Norway wanted to make sure they kept their land and waters safe. They knew it was important to protect what was theirs, just like it's important for all of us to look after what we value. This was about more than just oil. It was about making sure Norway stayed in control of its own future. So the story of Norway and oil is not just about discovering black gold. It's about a country being smart, cautious, and ready to stand up for itself. And maybe that's something we should all think about too. How to take care of what we have and make sure we're ready for whatever comes our way. Long before oil was a reality, Norway had a hunch that there might be oil beneath the sea near their shores. However, there were a couple of big questions hanging in the air. First off, if they did find oil, who would get to call it theirs? Would it be the Norwegian government or some private company that staked a claim? Another puzzle was about the sea itself. Where did Norway's part of the sea end and another country's begin? These weren't easy questions, but they were important ones to answer. Norway didn't waste any time dealing with these issues. In May of 1963, they made a big decision. Through a royal decree, 
which is a fancy way of saying the king and the government made an official decision, they declared that the seas around Norway were, well, Norwegian. This was a big deal because it wasn't just about the sea, it was about what was under the sea too. Then, a couple of years down the line, in 1965, the countries around Europe sat down, had a chat, and agreed on who owned which parts of the sea. They used something called the median line principle, which is like drawing a line in the middle of the sea between countries. Only a month after that, Norway put out an invitation. They told companies from other countries, come on over, make us an offer, and you might get to search for oil in our part of the North Sea. And so began the big hunt for oil and gas in Norwegian waters. It wasn't like they struck gold right away though. They had to try and try again, facing failure after failure, but they kept at it. Then, one day, they hit the jackpot. They found oil, and it wasn't just any oil field, it was massive. They called it a giant oil field because it was so big and it was going to bring in a lot of money. This discovery was a game changer for Norway, and even now, it's a huge part of their wealth. In the early days, it was mostly foreign companies that did the heavy lifting. They found the oil spots, they drilled into the sea, and they figured out how to get the oil out. But all this time, Norway had something important in mind. They weren't just going to sit back and watch. They wanted to make sure that this oil business was good for Norwegians, not just for the foreign companies. So, by 1972, Norway decided it was time to step up their game. They set up their own oil company called Statoil, which the government owned for the most part. This wasn't just any company. It was Norway's way of taking charge of its oil, making sure that the profits and the benefits stayed in the country. Today, this company is a big player in the oil world, and it's a symbol of how Norway managed to take control of its resources. Next, see how Norway stands out with its smart money moves and fair society, avoiding the usual traps of rich lands. Norway beats the oil curse. In Norway, the government did something pretty smart when they found oil. They decided to keep a big part of the oil company for themselves. About two-thirds of it, actually. The rest, they let people from the public buy if they wanted to. Sort of like owning a tiny part of the treasure. This company, which used to be called Statoil but has a new name now, became the captain of Norway's oil ship. Under this company, Norway didn't just watch from the sidelines, they dove right in. They bought big pieces of other oil companies, set up their own places to process the oil, made sure that Norwegians learned how to work in this booming industry, and, very importantly, they kept a lot of the money from the oil in their own backyard. This isn't how it goes down in many other parts of the world. There's this tricky thing economists call the resource curse. It sounds like something from a pirate movie, but it's actually about how countries with tons of natural treasures like oil or diamonds can end up in a worse spot than before they found them. These countries can get stuck with slower growth, not much democracy, and huge gaps between the rich and poor. Usually, in these places, a small group of very powerful people end up with all the money, and everyone else doesn't see much of it. But here's where Norway stands out. They dodged this resource curse like a pro. They didn't let their oil wealth create a tiny club of mega-rich people while everyone else missed out. Instead, they flipped the script. Now, sure, living in Norway can hit your wallet hard, like forking out $10 just for a beer. But the people there make pretty good money, way above the global average, with a GDP per capita soaring over $100,000. Not only that, but Norwegians typically live a good 10 years longer than the worldwide average. And there's more to this success story. Norway is super famous for its social services and welfare system. This means that if you live there, the government helps out with a lot of things like healthcare, education, and making sure people have what they need when they're old or if they can't work. So you might be wondering, how did Norway pull off this incredible feat? How did they turn their oil into not just money, but a better life for pretty much everyone in the country. There were a bunch of reasons why Norway managed to make the most out of their oil without running into big problems, unlike many other places. First off, even before oil was on the scene, 
Norway was already doing pretty well. They had a stable government where people's votes really mattered, and they weren't new to handling money and resources sensibly. This good starting point meant they could deal with the sudden oil wealth in a smart way. Instead of just letting foreign companies come in and take over, Norway was able to set up its own oil business. This was a big deal because it meant they kept control and didn't have to rely too heavily on outsiders. Then, there's the fact that Norway doesn't have a lot of people living there. When they found oil, there were only about 3.5 million Norwegians. This is like if you had a huge cake and only a few people to share it with, everyone gets a bigger piece. So when the oil money started coming in, it was easier to make sure that it benefited a lot of people, not just a few. Another thing that worked in Norway's favor was where it's located. Norway is pretty lucky because it's surrounded by countries that are generally friendly and peaceful. This means they didn't have to worry too much about conflicts or problems with neighboring countries over their oil wealth. This peace and stability around them made it a lot easier to focus on making the best out of their oil. Also, Norway's smart choices made a big difference. While some countries just spend their oil money right away or let private companies handle everything, Norway took a different path. They looked at other places like Denmark and the United Kingdom to see what they were doing, but then went their own way. For example, Denmark found oil around the same time but chose to let private businesses run the show. This worked out okay for them, but Norway wanted more control. The United Kingdom, on the other hand, used their oil money to cut taxes. This can be a good strategy to boost the economy, but it's a bit like spending your paycheck as soon as you get it. Norway decided instead to save a lot of their oil money for the future. They put it into a big fund that's like a savings account for the whole country. This way they could make sure they had money not just for today, but for many years to come. This thoughtful approach to money and resources is part of what set Norway apart. They didn't just think about the short term, they thought about the future too. They made sure that the oil wealth didn't just go to a few people, but helped improve life for everyone in Norway. They used the money to support things that make a country great, like schools, hospitals, and good roads. They also thought about what would happen when the oil ran out. By saving a big chunk of the oil money, they were planning ahead for future generations. Now, we see how Norway's smart saving plans set it apart, turning good planning into a huge national treasure. The world's largest piggy bank Norway decided to do something very special with the money it made from oil and gas, unlike many other countries. Instead of using all that money as soon as it came in, Norway had a clever plan. They put this money into a very, very large savings account, which we can call a government pension fund. Think of it as a supersized piggy bank, the biggest one in the whole wide world. This isn't just any old piggy bank, it's one that holds an astonishing amount of cash, about one and a half trillion dollars, to be exact. Now, let's try to understand just how much money that is. In the year 2023 alone, this enormous piggy bank managed to earn $380 million without doing anything, just from the money already in there growing. But here's an interesting rule Norway has. They only allow themselves to spend 3% of this money each year. The rest, the big bulk of it, stays locked away in the piggy bank, safe and sound for future generations of Norwegians. You might be scratching your head, wondering why they wouldn't just spend it all now. It seems a bit odd, right? But there's a method to their madness. This money acts like a giant safety net spread out underneath the whole country. Thanks to this unique strategy, Norway has become incredibly wealthy, especially compared to other oil and gas producing nations. This giant safety net, or let's stick with calling it a giant piggy bank, gives Norway's economy a lot of strength and stability. By not putting all their eggs in one basket, or in this case, all their money into just oil and gas, Norway has made a wise choice. Now oil and gas make up only about 20% of Norway's total income. This diversification is excellent news because it means the country isn't just hanging on to oil and gas for its financial well-being. Norway has found other ways to make money, other tricks as we might call them which helps protect the country's economy from ups and downs in the oil and gas markets. Here's an unexpected turn in our story. Recently, there's been a big disagreement between two countries, Russia and Ukraine. This fight has changed a lot of things, especially when it comes to buying and selling oil and gas. Because of this trouble, many countries are looking for new friends from whom they can buy oil and gas. And guess what? Norway, with all its oil and gas, has become even more popular 
It's like suddenly finding out that the quiet neighbor next door is a superstar in disguise. Now here's where things get even more interesting for Norway. While everyone was busy talking about oil and gas, Norway stumbled upon something else pretty cool. A type of rock called phosphate rock. You might not hear about it as much as you hear about oil or gas, but trust me, it's super important. This rock is used to make fertilizer, and fertilizer is what helps grow almost all the food we eat. So, discovering more of this rock is a pretty big deal. But, there's a catch. People knew there was phosphate rock in Norway, but they just discovered that it's hidden way, way deeper in the ground than they thought. Two, eight miles deep. That's like stacking 15 Eiffel Towers on top of each other, and then digging that deep into the ground. This discovery is huge because it means there could be enough of this special rock buried down there to help grow the world's food for a very long time. Now here's why this is really exciting, especially for some countries in the West. If Norway decides to dig up this phosphate and sell it, these Western countries could have a lot more control over a very important resource. And in the world of buying and selling, having control over something as critical as fertilizer is a huge advantage. This whole situation is a really big deal. It's not just about Norway finding more stuff to sell. It's about how this new discovery could change the way countries interact with each other. For a long time, different countries have depended on each other to buy and sell important things like oil, gas, and now phosphate. But when new sources of these things are found, it can shake up the whole system. Countries might start making new friends or even decide to change their old plans. Now, let's talk about China. China plays a very important role when it comes to phosphate. Even though China might not have the biggest amount of raw phosphate rock, they're very important because they have a lot of factories that turn this rock into different products that are useful for a lot of things. In fact, China is so important in this area that they control about 30% of this manufacturing part of the industry. Something happened in the year 2021. China decided to send less phosphate to other countries. They did this because the prices were getting higher worldwide and they wanted to make sure they had enough for themselves before sending it to others. But when China started sending out less phosphate, the prices for everyone else went up even more. This situation made everyone realize just how big of a role China has in controlling how much phosphate is available worldwide and the prices of phosphate products. This whole story with the phosphate shows us how the world's economy is changing these days. The price of things we buy doesn't just depend on how much of something is out there. It can also be affected by decisions made by countries that have a lot of control over certain products. These countries might decide to keep more of these products to themselves for various reasons, like political issues, or wanting to boost their own economy. This is a big change from how things used to work. Now, with this new discovery in Norway, there could be another big change. If Norway ends up controlling more than half of the world's supply of phosphate, they could have a big say in setting the price for it. This could shake things up a lot in the global market and affect how countries interact with each other when it comes to buying and selling important materials like phosphate. Moving to today, the finding of an important rock starts new story and tests for Norway, challenging its future plans. Let's see the connections surrounding the country between EU, Morocco, and Norway, the deepest rock connection. The government of Norway is super thrilled about the possibility of digging up and using these new mineral resources, specifically phosphate. However, not everyone is sharing in their excitement, especially the European Union. Although Norway isn't completely part of the EU, it is included in something called the European Economic Area. This special group means that Norway has to play by a lot of the same rules as countries that are fully in the EU. The big worry for the EU is about the environment. Turning phosphate into something we can use isn't exactly clean work. It can be pretty harmful to our planet. Europe has become very cautious about this and has stepped back from doing much of this dirty work. Instead, letting countries like China, Vietnam, and Kazakhstan pick up the slack. There's a big moment coming up in 2024. The EU is going to vote on a new law. This law could change everything. It might make it super easy for Norway to start their phosphate mining, or it could put up some serious roadblocks. Now, let's shift our focus to Morocco. Morocco is a country that's really dependent on phosphate. It's not just a minor part of their economy, it's a huge chunk. Nearly a quarter of what they sell to other countries comes from phosphate. 
You can imagine that they're not exactly throwing a party over Norway's new find. Here's why. When there's more of something available, like phosphate, the price usually goes down. If Norway starts pulling up loads of phosphate and selling it to the world, there will be more phosphate available than people need. This oversupply means the price will likely drop. For Morocco, this is troubling news. Lower prices mean less money. When you're counting on this money to support your country's economy, that's a big deal. It's not just about less cash in the bank. It's about potentially having less money for public services, less money for building new schools or hospitals, and less money for important projects that can make life better for the people living there. This could mean some really tough times ahead for Morocco if they can't find a way to keep their phosphate business profitable in the face of Norway's potential entry into the market. Furthermore, the effects of this situation extend beyond just Norway and Morocco. The global market for phosphate is like a delicate balance. When one part changes like a new country starting to mine and sell a lot of phosphate, it can throw everything off balance. Countries that used to have a lot of power in the market might find themselves struggling, while others might find new opportunities. This could lead to changes in alliances and trading partners as countries adjust to the new landscape of the phosphate market. In addition, the environmental concerns raised by the EU are shared by people and governments around the world. As countries try to balance their economic needs with the need to protect the environment, decisions like the one facing the EU become increasingly complex and significant. The outcome of their 2024 vote could set a precedent for how resources like phosphate are managed globally, influencing not just environmental policies, but also trade agreements and international relations. Digging up this phosphate found in Norway could really change the game for the country, but it's not going to be a walk in the park. At this moment, our equipment and technology allow us to extract minerals from the earth only up to about 4,900 feet deep. However, the phosphate deposits that Norway has stumbled upon are significantly deeper all the way down at about 15,000 feet below the surface. That's three times deeper than what we're used to, making most of this phosphate currently out of our reach with the existing mining technology. Yet, this isn't the first time Norway has faced such a challenge. Let's rewind to when Norway first discovered oil. Back then, the technology wasn't advanced enough to extract a lot of oil, especially from the depths they were finding it. People were skeptical, and thought the oil wells wouldn't last more than 30 years. But look at Norway now. More than half a century later, they're still producing oil. This shows that technology can advance in ways we can't always predict, making the impossible possible. If Norway can tackle the challenge of extracting this deep-set phosphate as successfully as they did with their oil, there could be significant economic benefits. Norway has a tradition of managing their natural resource wealth wisely. They might funnel a large portion of the profits from phosphate mining into their national pension fund, which is like a giant savings account for the country's future. If things go really well, this fund could grow enormously, potentially ensuring that every Norwegian could have over a million dollars in this fund. That's a huge deal. Furthermore, there's a growing conversation around using this newfound wealth for global good. Some suggest that Norway could increase its support for less fortunate countries. And then there's this idea from a Saudi prince, which sounds like it's straight out of a science fiction story. He proposed that Norway could use the wealth from phosphate to build a futuristic, linear city. While this may seem like a wild fantasy, the revenue from such vast phosphate resources could potentially make even the most ambitious projects doable. Has Norway really struck gold with its surprising treasure under the sea? Or is this just the start of more challenges and chances? We want to know what you think. Remember to like and subscribe for more.